trying to press the recording. There we go. All right. So no. with us today we have Jacques Habra. Yes. Jacques name, Jacques? Yeah, Jacques Habra. Nice to see you, Chase, as always. <laughs> um, so Jacques, do you want to do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm an entrepreneur living in Santa Barbara, and I've had the pleasure of uh, being involved in a lot of startups over the last 20 years. Some of them have gone on to uh, to exit very successfully. Some of them have failed miserably, <laughs> uh, mostly in the uh, web and marketing sphere. Uh, I'm right now involved in a pretty exciting digital health startup uh, called Self Echo. And, um, you know, do a lot of public speaking and mentoring of entrepreneurs. I've been doing that for the last uh, 10 years, pretty, pretty focused. Uh, and I have a consulting practice called New Spheric. Right on. So, so right now you're most heavily involved in, uh, in what, what were you saying it was called again? So Self Echo has a technology that helps clinical psychologists to track their patients' emotional well-being in between therapy visits using smartphones, psychology, psychology sensors, actually tracking our emotional well-being through our smartphones and aggregating this information into easy-to-understand reports for the psychologist to review right before session or in between their therapy sessions. Okay, and and you developed this. You said three three years. You started developing this three years ago. I did. Yeah, three years ago we started really putting this together. the The real background is that um, in all of my education and all of my uh, reading and all of my analysis, I've always felt that knowing yourself, really having a sense of who you are, of your strengths, your capacity, your weaknesses. Sometimes your weaknesses are most key. Is the secret to life. It's the secret to happiness. If you know yourself, you're going to put yourself in successful positions. You're going to surround yourself with people that compliment you effectively. Um, you're just having a, are going to have a much more likelihood of, of living an optimized life. And it occurred to me that, you know, we're, we're creating this digital footprint every day with smartphones. You know, we're carrying it around with us 24 uh, seven. When you think about the smartphone, it's able to track your social activity, your communications with friends and family your, um, you know, your movements, of course, your GPS movements. And if we could somehow track all of this data and extract from it real psychological metrics, real scientific psychological metrics, imagine how much this data could tell you about, you know, how to optimize your well-being, how to choose the people that you should surround yourself with, how to optimize when you spend time with certain people, what locations you spend time in, what, um, what activity do you engage in? And understanding the impact of days of the week and times of day on those very decisions that we make. I'm gonna lower my stand-up desk and take a seat here. <laughs> right on. Uh, okay, so besides uh, the, the main project, what else are you, what else are you uh, working on? Like, uh... Well, I've got a bread and butter business called First Click. That's got some great partners and great, uh, that's a great team. And that company does a pretty significant amount of online marketing for some real signature clients. So uh, we handle the web development and the SEO and the social media and basically all aspects of the online marketing matrix. And uh, that's really where I started my career 20 years ago. I was a student at the University of Michigan. I graduated in 1996 with a degree in English and philosophy. And the philosophy was, uh, was, you know, again, why I'm so into this whole concept of knowing yourself. But I started a web development agency right out of school called Web Elite. And I built it up and I sold it in the uh, early 2000s. And then I went on to become an angel investor and, and uh, of course, a consultant and a coach. But, uh, but Web Elite was rooted in online marketing. And now I've kind of gone back to my roots and starting first click in 2007, I've got a great team that helps build that company. Right on. That's one of your passions, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, I don't know how much we want to tell about my passion, but um, yes, I, I am very passionate about search engine optimization, which is one of the reasons why I find it uh, so interesting that you, uh, that you do so, uh, this sort of thing. 
So um, that's one of the things I kind of mainly want to talk about. Um, but if you feel like you want to talk about other things as well, um, then you know wherever we want to go with it. I'm sure the, uh, the 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 viewers will have questions. It seems like we already have about seven viewers, which is pretty cool. Um, and I actually know some of them from some past blabs, and uh, some of them are actually people from the USA as well. So um, it looks like we do have one question. Uh, Sal Coder asked how much. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this is cool. I'm, I'm enjoying this new uh, platform. I see a lot of potential with this kind of thing. Right. Yeah, and the cool thing too is, uh, you know, at some point, I know this is just a, uh, you know, interview between you and I, but, um, you know, at some point, maybe we want to set up something where uh, people can call in and also ask questions as well. So it doesn't have to be just a text conversation. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, uh, you're, you're kind of fading in and out, Chase. I'm, I'm not having, I'm not hearing you completely right. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah. Perfect. Okay. My, my, my finger might've been over the microphone. Um, Much better. So, okay. So um, what would you say one of the main, um, what are some of the main things uh, you, you keep in mind um, in terms of being uh, a successful entrepreneur? Oh, geez, there's, there's so much. I mean, you know, you, you kind of have to go into it knowing that there's going to be a lot of letdowns, a lot of failures, a lot of uh, disappointments. And, uh, you know, whatever you got to do to build yourself up to not be affected and discouraged by that. Um, it's a very iterative process. Um, I mean, it's pretty much unheard of. And, and if you've heard of it, it's probably not real. That You'll come up with an idea or product or a service and you'll launch it and you'll start making money and, and start developing customers and grow it there. Um, the vast majority of, of startups and, and any entrepreneurial endeavor involves a lot of trial and error. And part of that is, you know, trying something, it doesn't work out, trying something a little different, seeing how that goes. I think most people don't have any clue how to validate their concepts and don't have any clue how to extract um, data they need to make that adjustment so that they can go back out there and, and represent their product or reposition their product and get better results. And so oftentimes, you know, they'll try something out, they'll fail, they'll be discouraged, um, and they won't, they won't want to go there again. You know, they'll take it very, very personal. Somehow you have to check your ego at the door, you know, and not be, uh, not be offended that it didn't work out. Okay. Right on. Uh, and, and so if, if somebody came to you, you know, looking to be, um, you know, an entrepreneur, uh, what would be some of the things that you would be asking them? I'm giving you props right now, Chase. Um, <laughs> I'll give so, you some I mean, I, th I think that it, it always depends on what, what the actual, uh, thank you, Chase. Um, <laughs> it, it always depends on what the actual uh, product or service is in the marketplace that they're going after and what exactly is the execution plan, the business plan. Um, so I, I guess we could talk about specific specifics or we could go into a more general conversation. Maybe the, uh, the audience out there has specific questions about something they're working on or something they're contemplating to work on. Happy to take questions about this. Yeah, definitely. If anybody wants to chime in, um, you know, this is just kind of an experimental first uh, recording. So that's why I kind of didn't want to take it too seriously. Um, just so we can kind of get a, get a hang on what we're going to be going about with, cause we're definitely going to be doing blabs in the future. And I think Jock also would be a great person to, uh, start interviewing other people as well. So we're just kind of checking it out. Um, but what do you, what do you think? Here's a good question. What do you think about, um, uh, blab as a, uh, a good networking tool? I mean, I've talked about this in the past with some other people and we all pretty much agree that this is going to be the next, you know, kind of big thing, um, especially in terms of networking, and it kind of brings the whole social aspect to social media. Um, just from your experience right now, what do you, how are you feeling that, you know, how, how do you feel that this app's going to develop? Well, I mean, what I love about it is it's, it's the nature of it being live. Um, I think anybody can, can package something and, and edit a video and, and provide a pretty, you know, refined, uh, edited 
product, whether it's a blog post or it's a video or it's a social media post. Um, and that, there's a place for that. And that's, that's really good for people to do that and, and so forth. But there's nothing like being live where you're asked questions and you have to have pretty meaningful answers where you can really get a sense of somebody's knowledge about a topic and somebody's organization of their thoughts about a topic. Uh, being live, I think, is a huge advantage. So, you, you know, using this kind of a platform, you could probably very quickly get a sense of how effective someone would be uh, as a, um, you know, as a consultant, as an advisor, as opposed to, you know, reviewing a website and kind of going through a more tr traditional model where, you know, the website looks so good, this might be the right person for me. Um, but, you know, you know, maybe not, you know, without a live interview. And then even even a phone interview can be very staged. So I, I like that live nature of this medium a lot. Um, I'm still kind of getting a feel of how it works and how we can get other people involved and in, in asking them questions and so forth. So it's cool. St it's good so far, though. Right. So uh, the, how the algorithm works with this is basically it takes the amount of views you have um, currently on it and, it, and it and also the amount of live viewers that you have. And then it ranks you to the top accordingly. Uh, if you have more live viewers, you will basically have um, a higher weight than just uh, past viewers. So you can see the little I, that's just viewers that have been here to, your, uh, to the channel total. And then the live viewers, which is on the right, it's the little people. Um, those are, that's how many, um, that's how many people who are live are watching it. So if you have say a hundred uh, hits like in the past, but there's only 30 live viewers, then the people with, you know, uh, 25 live viewers and 200 hits, you might actually outrank them because there's uh, a heavier weight for the actual live viewers. Got it. But, it's, but it is a pretty simple algorithm. Um, I found that basically the longer you do your blabs, the more uh, you're basically going to have a better chance of ranking higher. So um, my when I've done these in the past, uh, I've actually gotten um, more people to my blab like three hours into it than, you know, an hour into it. Uh, and, and it also depends on, you know, how many people you retain, how you interact with them. And then it also, if you have more people who are actually sitting in these seats and you're interacting with them, people are more likely to join in my opinion. Um, so, so yeah, it is a pretty cool thing. Um, I don't know how much time you want to spend on this. I was thinking like an hour would be a fit, uh, sufficient, but if you have, um, things that you have to do, you know, the next 20 minutes or whatever, I understand that too. Um. And also, if you want to experiment with getting more people in here, we can do that as well, uh, like actually talking with us. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever kind of organically makes sense. Um, you know, I'm working on a few different things today uh, at the company. There's, um, you know, there, there's a lot going on right now with, uh, with mobile therapy. We've been asked to get involved in some pretty big contracts with health systems. And so I'm kind of analyzing the pros and cons of those. Um, of course, first click is always a, a big priority. There's always things going on. We've got a lot of clients that are, um, you know, wanting us to have more traffic to their website, and we're excited to see the numbers go up and the metrics go up. Uh, we love looking at the latest technology, the latest uh, trends. We love trying to anticipate what the Google algorithms are doing and being a couple steps ahead of them. And we like to think that we are a couple of steps ahead of them. And of course, uh, you know, just balancing all that with life, you know, with all work and no play makes Jacques a dull boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's probably uh, one of one of the uh, biggest qualities I admire about Jacques is that he actually uh, he's really good at, you know, staying down to earth while also being, you know, really productive in his business. And maybe you have some tips for people to, you know, kind of do the same thing. Cause me, even personally, I, you know, I, I get way out of whack when I, you know, do this SEO stuff because, you know, you could spend, you can spend your entire life on it. So how do you, how do you measure yourself? You know, um, when, when, when it's a good idea to, you know, go out, and, you know, do some yoga or go do some, you know, walking or whatever. Um, and then, you know, st really still stay in this. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that everybody's got to figure out their own flow, their own flow zone and, and what works best for them. I mean, I can tell you that, I can't imagine, uh, you know, going more than like two or three consecutive days without some exercise. 
try to exercise uh, every day or at least four or five times a week. Um, and, and it could be anything. I mean, it could be a bike ride on the beach. It could be a, a long walk. It could be a, like yoga, like you said. But, uh, you know, get, getting getting your sweat on and getting getting yourself present in that breathing and that um, the physical exertion is awesome. An awesome way to escape and to really focus on being present in your body, which I think a lot of people have, uh, have you know, don't know how to do, quite frankly, you know, and they, they struggle. And so they get caught up in their head a lot. Um, I think making schedules is really helpful. I think, you know, scheduling things out. There was a time in my life where I would literally schedule every single hour of my day. Uh, I mean, I'm talking every hour of my day, I would schedule it out. And, um, you know, that was really a, a, an awesome way to live for a while. I mean, it was actually right around post-college and last year in college. But I got so much done because I knew the night before what I wanted to accomplish the following day. And so I would control my schedule, right? I would not react to emails coming in or phone calls coming in. I would accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Now, I would actually make time the night before for the following day to have nothing on my schedule. And on those those hour blocks or two-hour blocks, I would, you know, dedicate to, you know, looking at email or, or Facebooking or, you know, listening to music or, or doing nothing, quite frankly. But I think that um, it's extremely difficult for entrepreneurs to organize their own time because by definition, as an entrepreneur, you're the kind of person that wants to, you know, not be controlled. And, and even controlling yourself is a, uh, is sort of like a, in a way, a compromise. But if you really want to get things done, if you really want to make advancements, you've got to create a lot of discipline. And what better way to discipline yourself than to actually control your schedule as a starting point? So, um, yeah, I guess those two things are extremely important to me. Number one is, you know, getting getting a little bit of exercise every day, something that works in your flow. And then number two, really creating discipline in your schedule, whether that's creating an hour to hour schedule the night before or, you know, deciding on, on three or four things you're going to accomplish out of your day and committing to those things before you get distracted, before you go into your sort of entrepreneurial, exploratory, mindful, kind of distracted mode, which we all do. Those right. are very key takeaways, I think. Well, wow. that's, some, that's some really good advice. Um, I guess my only question is, uh, oh, and somebody said, and you have, and have your hand in everything. Um, oh, I don't so see I, the person. Where did that, is that? It should be on the it should be on the on the right of your screen. It should say a comment. Yeah, the last one I see is uh, Kristen Drysdale tweeted. Yeah, no, she didn't tweet. It's just that's at her name. That's her Twitter name. It says and have your hand in everything. Oh, you didn't see. Interesting. Huh. It says it on my screen. Yeah, no, I don't see I don't see the mention or the question or anything. That's fine. You can tell me. Yeah, and have your hand in everything. I, I suppose, but I mean. If you have your hand in everything, you probably don't have very good talent around you. You know, you want to surround yourself with people that are going to get things done at your level of excellence and at your level of expectation and get out of their way and not and not micromanage them or, or even know that they're doing it or not. And if they're not doing that, you either need to elevate your, uh, your communication with them or you need to replace them. And uh, there's no... Uh, there's no uh, gray area about that. So Sal Coder posted how much six, seven figures. What, what does that mean? How much what? I, I think he was asking how much when you were talking about the business, how much you were making. How much do I make? I, I don't know, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, I'm in a place in my life where my yearly income is not my definition of, uh, of success or value. Um, on a financial level, I look at the value of the equity that I have in my companies. Um, at a community level, I look at the impact, you know, my board service and my volunteer work has. And then on a spiritual level and on a conscious level, 
I really think about, you know, whether or not I'm living a truly profound, authentic life where I feel like I know myself and I'm living a life of, of true, um, you know, synchronicity with my gifts and, um, and you know, with my immediate community and my immediate friends and family. So, you know, how much money I make, um, you know, has, hasn't been a real important factor for me for quite a long time. But at one point it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, in my 20s and, um, you know, my, my 30s, most of my 30s, I, I was, you know, always wanting to make more money and uh, always, always, you know, attached my personal, you know, my, uh, my sort of self-worth around how much money I made. But, um, you know, I figured out how um, unproductive that is. Hmm. You were saying earlier about how um, you surround yourself with good people. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, first and foremost, you know, you have to find people that you get along with, that you have a respect for, that have a respect for you. I would never hire anybody who I did not think I could learn a lot from. Um, I would never hire anybody who I did not think that uh, who I did not have a, a level of respect for, for who they are and what they bring to the party. Um, it's got to be two ways. You know, if you, if you just expect to hire people that are going to provide you a service or a function, um, you know, that's what you're going to get in return. You're going to get a service and a function, but that's not where the magic happens. The magic happens in the, in the sort of in-between time, you know, in the time when, you know, you, they have provided you with more insights on your own vision, when they've added to your, to your strategy, when they've expanded uh, your goals. Um, and there's no way they're going to do that for you unless they feel like, you know, they're, they're, they're on your level and you respect them at that level. So it doesn't matter if, if, you know, you're 20 years like me into it and you hire somebody who's got a year or two of experience. You know, they've got to know that you respect them. They've got to know that you are valuing them at the same level that they value you. Hmm. Well, and, and I guess I would just wonder, I mean, can you just tell right off the bat, is that a skill that you've just acquired that those are the kind of people that you're going to be um, looking for and, and you know that they're that's who they are or sometimes you feel like it's a work in progress or sometimes you feel like, um, you know, Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Well, there, there's an age old tenant about hiring people. It, it goes something like hire slow and fire quickly. And, um, you know, hiring somebody is a lot like dating them. You know, <laughs> and, it, and it's kind of crazy, you know, when you think about the conventional method to hiring people, you know, you, you basically have a couple of interviews and then you bring them in and, and suddenly, you know, you start exposing them to your clients and exposing them to your other team and paying them and, and trusting them and going pretty deep with them. And, and it's like, you know, would you do that with a, somebody you're dating? You know, would you, would you go on a couple of dates and then jump into a serious relationship? Uh, I hope not. Uh, I hope you'll be cautious, but, um, you know, I'm getting close now, but they're coming in late. So uh, I think the key is to know what you're looking for, just like knowing yourself. You want to know what you're looking for. Have a, have a visualization of what that person looks like and just be patient. Um, if you meet with them and, and they're not fitting the mold, but you like some aspects about them, go meet with them again. Uh, take them to lunch. Watch how they, how they treat the service staff. That's another technique. Um, are they, are they, uh, do they show thanks for, uh, to the service staff? Are they polite? Um, how do they eat? You know, uh, how do they carry themselves? Uh, you can learn a lot about somebody's character by grabbing lunch with them. So that's a, that's a technique that, that is involved in, in going slowly and hiring slowly. Hey, Jacques, it looks like somebody wants to actually jump in and ask you a couple of questions. Are you okay with that or? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I, you know, I can't scroll. Oh, you know what? I know why. Go ahead. All right, Sal Coder, you're good.
What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Nice, uh, nice giant microphone, Sal Coder. <laughs> Something like that, right? You can come with Paul. I'm starting to feel inadequate now that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. Hey, I just have a question. Um, are you guys willing to talk about traffic generation or not? Absolutely. Sure. So I came across um, a platform called Sumo Me. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I have it on my site. Cool. What do you guys? I mean, besides that, what else you think it's a good tool to like generate traffic? And I'm like, I'm not talking about like going and buy traffic, but you know, this is kind of a cool concept. Like you're sharing content between the community, right? And that's how you actually get into traffic. Um, I don't know if you guys know or some other tools similar to this or some other tip or trick to get traffic. Chase, you should probably field this one. All right. Well, I use, um, I mean, getting tools to generate traffic is a little vague because, and by the way, welcome, Paul. I, I, was, I was in a blab with you before. You're a really cool guy. Oh, thanks, man. You too. So, you know, I, I do use certain tools uh, for just SEO in general, but in terms of generating traffic, that's more of an outside deal, in my opinion. If you want to be generating traffic, you want to be engaging with people who are trying to go to your site, and however you're going to reach them is either going to be through organic, social media, content marketing, or pay-per-click ads. In terms of tools, all that stuff is going to be research for those things. Cool, cool. So, also, have you guys come across with these pages called Launch Rock? Have you come across the company? Yeah, so, I've used Launch Rock before. Oh, cool. So, Launch Rock essentially is a way for you to pre to build your mailing list before you go public, right? Yeah, it, it gives you a placeholder so that you can basically invite people to be uh, notified when your when your product or service or, or website or company launches. Huh, interesting. How, can you? Well, I mean, if people are providing an email address, where do they store the email address? Is it stored by Launch Rock, or do they have some sort of like uh, integration with Mailchimp or Aweber or like lead pages or whatnot? Yeah, there, there's a, there's a, an administration on the back end that lets you look, look at all the emails and export them. Um, they don't. I think they do have tie-ins to email marketing programs, but you can always you know export. And, and put it wherever you want. Okay. Oh, so, how would you compare using Launch Rock for that instead of uh, maybe using Lead Pages? Um, Launch Rock, in my experience, is a very specific focus. It really has more to do with, you know, uh, the, the sort of the time before you're going to launch, the 30 days, the 60 days before you're going to launch, and all it is typically is one page uh, to basically explain what you're offering and try to drive traffic to it in order to get as many emails as you can for the earliest adopters. Um, my understanding is that lead pages is more of a, a, a true landing page uh, management tool that lets you do A-B testing, lets you do a real analysis on what's working, what's not. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. I have a but, go ahead. No, uh, well, I was just going to ask you, Jacques, what do you, since you've been in the SEO industry for a while, what do you think is the difference between the SEO back when you started and SEO today? Oh yeah, no, I mean it's totally night and day. I mean uh, everything has evolved. There, you, you, we used to be able to get uh, you know traffic and rankings on the first page within literally 24 hours by simply you know fooling the search engines. You know, uh, we would embed. Uh, we would embed code. We would embed the same key phrases in the same color font as the background font. Right. And children's, you know, were too stupid to notice that it was all like, you know, fiction. And there were so few companies that understood even the most basic SEO that it would be a no brainer. I mean, we, it was the only time in my life that I would use the word guarantee. <laughs> I mean, we, we would literally guarantee that it would get you a top five rankings within 30 days or your money back. Um, and and now there was about a two to three year window uh, between 2000, 2003, 2004, and about 2009, 2010, where it was just, you know, constant free for all. And every time the search engines would, would solve the two to three year trick, you figure out the new trick. 
Right. We need a technology that you all might, might find this awesome and fascinating that we codenamed LimeBot. And we had it running on our servers from 2006 to 2010. And it was such a game changer, such an advantage. And I'll tell you guys how simple it was. We would buy domain names on the open market that were basically no longer being used. They were domain names that were heavily trafficked and had like tens of thousands or millions of incoming links attached to them. Now, mind you, they were like, you know, you buy like a domain name like um, freelinuxemail.com. <laughs> and it, it, would, it, would, it would be like, you know, somebody who just basically had a, a Linux server and would give you a free email account. But there were like literally 5 million incoming links attached to that domain name. So then what we would do is we would create content around any of our clients' sites. So if we were marketing for, say, a client who was selling iron lighting, we'd write an article about iron lighting. And we would use a simple redirect. So when the feed would come in from the, to the free Linux email, we would redirect it, attach the key phrase iron lighting, and redirect it to a landing page for uh, you know the content we wrote. So all these incoming links were really being juiced up for our clients, and it was totally legitimate. We were we were not it was not black hat at all, but it was because the search engines weren't they, they hadn't created yet the no follow rule in an intelligent way. So we would take advantage of the no follow but index. Wow. So. Don't follow, but index the subsequent page and use the, the feed that you got from the incoming link to give juice to that incoming page. That was the technique. <laughs> Can't do any of those things now. Well, I mean, anybody, the, 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 the life cycle, but by the time you figure out a trick, has gone from like three years, four years to like a week. Yep. So you're better off just doing it legitimately and doing it right with real content. Wow. So you can rank like to the first first page in the same day. <laughs> oh man, we, we got I mean we I mean we, we were we were marketing on some of the most competitive key phrases you can imagine for some of the biggest brands you can imagine. I don't I can't even tell you what who they were. And and we were you know we were doing you know hundred thousand dollar campaigns, we would do the work in a week. Well, just to put this into perspective, I um, spent four months trying to rank for a keyword that, you know, was decently competitive, about a 40% keyword difficulty score for Moz. And, and I mean, that's with all of the most, you know, uh, up-to-date white hat techniques. So, like you said, it is not the same as it used to be when you used to be able to rank, you know, one to two days or, you know, a week maybe. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I mean, this is just a general statement on, on just this, the, the, the way that entrepreneurship has gone. Uh, I see a lot of guys out there and girls that are basically like branding themselves, creating their personal brands out there, um, and they've got quite a following. And then you, you scratch the surface and you're like, well, what have these people really done? What, what, what have they accomplished? Have they ever built and sold a business? Have they ever raised money? And, and the definitive answer is no. But guess what they figured out? They figured out how to market, how to market themselves. And suddenly they're an expert and everyone's following them. And it's like, it's, it's kind of a, we're at a weird time. The world, the level playing field has gotten so easy to access. The barrier to entry is so low that everybody and their mom thinks that they're a <laughs> marketing expert. Right. And, and they're not. And it's, and it's it kind of, it, it's a little unsettling at times. Well, Jacques, wouldn't you agree that SEO is more than just search engine optimization? It's also a form of being intelligent with how you handle business. It is. I mean, it's being predictive too. You know, if you're a really good search engine optimizer, you know, you're not just solving somebody's problem today. You're identifying and you're you're predicting a trend, not just a trend in terms of key phrase interest, but a trend in terms of what their target market will respond to terms of a social media platform you know you think about a platform like pinterest you know the really smart seoers were cornering that market 
you know, right when Pinterest became popular for things that were related to what was popular on Pinterest. And, you know, you, you got to you gotta know where things are headed and how to use it. So you, you got to go way beyond understanding the algorithms and, you know, the how to tag a website and, and things like that. Paul, any, any thoughts? I was going to ask you, have you ever used SEO Press? Everybody talks about Yoast. Have you ever used SEO Press? I, I personally haven't. Um, um, we've tried them all, Paul. We really, you mean like as a plugin? Yep. I think it's a guy in um, uh, Hong Kong. I think it was something like that. He's a developer and he advertises a lot on Warrior Forum. Um, you know, it's, it's I think I mean it's pretty sweet. Back in, I mean I was selling that chase, uh, like what was it two weeks ago, two nights ago, last night or something like that. Um, yeah. And it's pretty sweet because it scans your blog post. It's just more for like blog post, and it tells you like if you're missing H2 tags, if you're missing H1, if you don't have enough key relevance, um, all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, and it's like you know, it's forty seven dollars for the for a single page. And now, yeah. if you want to buy, like, if you want to buy the developer version, it's like a hundred bucks. But I mean, and this is more oriented again for the blog post itself, not for the general site, right? Just for the well, blog post. One of the thing, I, the one of the things I was talking about the other night when you mentioned it was the fact that you know it, it does what it's supposed to do, but to a certain degree, SEO these days is a lot more experimenting. So when you want to SEO a page for, for instance, your keywords, um, you're going to be wanting to check out a bunch of different heading tags. You want to check out a bunch of different title tags. You want to check out a bunch of different, um, you know, uh, you know, anchor text links to other parts of your site because if if you're going to get the, the rank you want on the first time you optimize your page, then you just won the lottery, in my opinion. It, it takes a lot more these days of experimenting. It took me, like I said, you know, like three months before I got the right title tag on, on, my, on my website. So, sure, yeah. so, so it may be good for people who are just looking for like, you know, a basic optimization of their website. But in terms of like trying to, you know, get the right uh, formula, it, one try throughout the website, one shot, it's not enough in my opinion. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. All right, guys, that's all I have. I, I got to jump on really quick. I'm working on some stuff, but uh, nice talking to you. Nice meeting you. Hey, thanks for joining, Paul. We'll see you later. Thank you, Paul. I'm sure I'll, I'll see you again. Sure, sure. Yeah, a lot of great info. Thank you, guys. Take sure. Right. Hey, Jock, so what do you think? Do you think uh, that that's probably good for now? Yeah, I think that was fun. Let's uh, let's do this again soon and uh, and see where we're at. All right, cool. Well, thanks for everyone for joining in, and I'm sure there's going to be some people, uh, you know, watching the the replay on this. And I'm glad you guys were able to, uh, you know, watch it all the way through. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right.